Welcome to Missing Artwork, a show that lets artists behind your favorite album art tell their story and experience in making the iconic image of the music you love. I'm your host, Michael Paul Escanuelos, and today we're talking to David Brandon Keating, the photographer of the artwork for Slingshot Dakota's 2016 album, Break. The artwork for Break presents a clear message. The cover displays pieces of a broken vase on a calming lavender surface with flowers spread across the scene. A classic contrast of beauty and heartbreak. The band's name and album title are laid out around the image with minimal font treatment. The image attaches itself to the title so naturally, but where the piece really thrives is in the details that come out of Geating's photography. With his past work, Geating has been described as an artist who can bring out the beauty of the mundane and ordinary. His vibrance can capture an audience and keep their attention with the unconventional subjects of his photography. Break is a perfect example of his style. With his work with shadows and color, Geating captures a visual that feels almost dreamlike. In this episode, Geating breaks down his process and how his love for dollar stores influences his work. Uh, My name is David Brandon Geating. I am an artist and photographer living and working in Brooklyn, New York. Um, Originally, I'm from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which is actually how I know Tom and Carly from Slingshot Dakota. Geating began his relationship with Slingshot Dakota as a fan. I met Tom from Slingshot Dakota, the drummer. Originally, in probably like 2002 or three, I was a kid in the Lehigh Valley, which is like, I think the third largest metropolitan area in Pennsylvania next to Philly and Pittsburgh. And it's like a mix of these three towns, Bethlehem, Allentown, and Easton. And there's like a huge punk community there. A lot of people throw basement shows and all ages shows at weird venues like VFWs and and anything they can get their hands on. And you know, there's a whole bunch of bands doing cool stuff. And Tom was a part of it for a long time. He's probably like 10 years older than me, or maybe more. My older brother kind of got me into punk music and DIY shows and that whole scene. And so I would go with my friends when I was in high school, probably starting when I was like 14. And I actually played drums in a bunch of bands that Tom happened to be into. And for me, that was like a huge deal because he was kind of like, I don't know, in local punk communities, I feel like there are these people that you look up to, like people that have been doing it for longer and have been in notable bands. And he was always drumming in like cool hardcore bands and stuff like that. And I always thought he was like the coolest dude and like the best drummer. Slingshot Dakota, I actually remember seeing them before Tom was even in the band. It used to be a three piece. It sounded a little bit different. There was guitar in it. So I knew Carly too. We kept in contact and like, Even when I moved um, from PA to New York City, Tom would still follow my blog. And, you know, whenever I would see him in person or talk to him through email, he'd, you know, give me props on my photo work and be like, dude, your stuff's amazing, like blah, blah, blah. And um, so he's always been supportive in, in everything I do. Before, in previous records, they had worked with a variety of artists that they knew too. So they were probably just thinking like, who else do we know that's doing cool stuff visually? And they reached out to me, and it was cool. With the band allowing so much freedom on the project's direction, Geating broke from his conventional work process. With this album art, all they really told me was that the name of the record was Break. And I don't know why. I I don't normally work like this. um, But it was just kind of like a gut reaction to make something almost really obvious. uh, Things that were broken or torn apart or things that were being pieced back together. Um, And normally I don't work like that. Normally I try to do something that's not as obvious where it's like, I'll have the initial reaction, but then maybe I'll go with the second idea to make it a little weirder, a little bit harder to crack. But for this one, I don't know where these four ideas really came from, but but they all came out of me just thinking about the word break and thinking what it it means to break and what what happens when something does break. And they, they kind of just let me roll with it you know we wanted to do something fresh that was kind of influenced by the record title and also by the music they sent me like a rough draft of the record which i listened to in full like the day before i shot it just to get a sense of uh you know 
how the music sounded and and if the artwork reflected that in the right way, you know. When I heard the music, it it wasn't very dark, so I didn't want it to be misleading. Uh, it could have gone in like a super kind of sinister direction, but it didn't. It's it's bright, but there's something melancholy about it, and I think it's that kind of dichotomy that that makes it work. Taking influence from his past work, Keating was able to implement his signature style for Break. You know, my work is always evolving and stuff, but I think the work is in the vein of a lot of my other work, where it's sort of these things that are maybe inexpensive or mundane or insignificant, but presented in a way that makes them feel more important or more significant. So I always sort of am prone to using that approach. The cover that they ended up using was a photo of flowers and a vase, both of which I bought at a dollar store and then a bodega right, ne- right next to each other. I'm not really concerned with it having a monetary value. It's not really about that. It's just about uh, doing what you can with what you have and, and trying to say something kind of strong and smart, but in a way that is relatable and, and kind of like, I don't know, I feel like there are these sort of aspects in everyday life that people just overlook. Although it may seem simple, Geating recruits several elements for his subjects. So depending on the project, I'll either improvise the whole thing, like just kind of wing it from, uh, you know, me going into a store and wandering around aimlessly and, and just grabbing whatever uh, catches my eye, like, oh, this would be perfect without having like any kind of preconceived notions about what I'm going to make. But for something like this, where uh, I wanted it to read, I wanted people that have no idea about my work and and just like the band and uh, and, and people that buy records based on how they look. I, I just wanted these things to pop out and make sense. So I kind of put some more thought into it before I, I went on my search for things. So I, I actually sent Tom and Carly like a list of ideas before I started doing this. And they told me the ones that they liked and the ones that they didn't like. I didn't tell them how they would look or what colors I would use or the exact materials and things. This process includes taking objects from his everyday life. I live uh, in an apartment in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and I also have a studio space that I rent there where I make most of my work, but it's about a 15-minute walk away. So on the way to my studio, there's a bunch of stores that I pass all the time. Dollar stores are like huge for me. They, you know, you can buy so many things there that are super visual, maybe not too well-made, and maybe not the best quality uh, if you're using them for, for practical things, but for Things like this are perfect. So that plate and those forks are both from, I mean, the plate and all the silverware is from a dollar store. As I mentioned before, the flowers are from like a small deli um, that was selling flowers out front. The leaves and the sticks are from a park. And the photo I just cut out of an old book I found at a thrift store, some kind of uh, a book about nature from like the early 90s. And I don't know, I like this landscape and I thought the colors would be cool on yellow. It's just kind of a a mix of planning like halfway and then also walk, shopping and seeing uh, what works and what doesn't. Things that kind of jump out at me, things that I respond to impulsively are normally what I'm drawn to when I'm making work. I don't like to think too hard, too hard about it, you know. To properly capture the image of break, Keating needed to lay out each piece for his shoot. I went about laying out the cover by just kind of, well, first breaking the vase, which is something that I have little experience in doing, at least intentionally. So (laughs) that was kind of, uh, that was a challenge in itself. I just ended up wrapping it in a cloth and like hitting it with a hammer and then just kind of like sprinkling the pieces down on a piece of colored paper with gloves on, just like trying to arrange them and not hurt myself and (laughs) make something that looked cool visually uh and also something that looked like set up but not too set up like something that looked like it could have actually been thrown down on the ground broken there and that's the way the pieces fell so it's it's all about finding that balance yeah i wanted it to look like there was some motion to it even though it was a still life Geating had a clear vision in mind when working with shadows and lighting on set So the lighting in these photos is sort of a lighting that I use often uh, in my work. And really, it's just kind of a replica of like super strong afternoon sunlight, where it's like, you know, you're on the street walking around, the sun's beating down at an angle, you kind of see these long, sharp uh, shadows. 
everyone under the sun gets it. You know what I mean? It's like this, it's this lighting that you see a lot and it kind of, it can kind of make anything on the street look important, including yourself, you know, when you're a kid and you're walking around and you kind of, you see this bigger, longer version of you on the street and you're chasing it and it's, it's this whole thing. So I think shadows are important because it's almost, it's like a false reality in a way, but it's like, it's also super real. It's, 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 it's like a caricature of, of the object you're photographing in a way. It just kind of, uh, it makes things pop in a way that soft lighting doesn't, or it can present things that would otherwise be considered too moody, or I think the lighting actually helped present it in a different way. Color plays an important role in not only getting subjects, but in his set backgrounds as well. I chose the colors to make the objects stand out a little bit more and just kind of give them a platform to exist in that that gave them more power in a way. The purple for the cover, um, I was thinking about using pink or blue, but there's something about that lavender that was super calming, um, especially in sort of an aggressive moment uh, of this glass shatter, uh, shattering. And, you know, this like sort of like lavender color is giving it a completely different world to live in, like a, a more calm kind of zone to exist in other than like, I don't know, something more aggressive, you know? These are all real photographs, but I do use Photoshop to my advantage to just kind of make things uh, a little bit more surreal. Um, and when it comes to stuff projects like this, where I want them to have a kind of polish to them, I try to make them look like extra glossy in a way, extra, extra um, perfect, at least the backgrounds, because I know that the images are, are messy by nature and they're kind of a little bit complex for how simple the ideas are. So the colors, I want them to look kind of weirdly cosmetically perfect. But I do always try to use colors in real life on set that are pretty close to the colors here, like using white or something and then trying to make it into a color later. It's possible, but it's not as effective. You can kind of tell something's up. So <laughs> for these ones, I, you know, I try to use colors in my studio that were as close to the final images as possible. Though minimal, Geating uses Photoshop to his advantage to help enhance the impact of his work. I use post-production if I think that it will enhance uh, the image in a way that can't be done in real life, but I try not to use it in lazy ways. I try not to do the thing where in real life I don't do all the work um, because I can just fix it later. Like I, I, I'm someone that always does as much as I can in real life. I try to use it not to like edit a pimple off someone's face, but to do things that you can't do in real life, to do things that are like much weirder. And, and I almost try to use it wrong. Uh, it's hard to explain, but I kind of try to use it to make things look a little bit surreal and not, you know, real life perfect. Yeah, it's different for every project. I just kind of go with the flow. Some things don't need much editing at all, just some level adjustments or whatever. And then in if I want things to be like pretty obviously uh, adjusted and, and worked on, then I'll go for it. I'll go ham in Photoshop and just make it look nuts. I went to school for photography, but in Photoshop, I'm pretty self-taught. Like some of my friends have watched me use it and be like, dude, what the hell are you doing? But I kind of like that I have my own, my own strategy because it makes it, I don't know, it makes it more me, more unique. Uh, using a program can almost be just as important as like using a paintbrush or using a camera. They're all kind of tools in the trade that matter, you know. As a musician himself, Geating has a clear passion for artwork. I think the, the reception of the artwork's been pretty good. You know, I've done some other artwork in the past for record covers, but I think this has gotten the best reception probably because it is sort of poppy and also... Slingshot Dakota is probably the most well-known uh, band that I've worked with. <laughs> so I think more people have seen the art. Um, it made me feel good about it. You know, I'm glad that people respond to it. I think that we live in an age where artwork for records gets a little bit overlooked now, and it's kind of sad. I feel like that's such a huge part of the experience. Obviously, I buy albums on iTunes, too, and I stream things and whatnot, but there still is something about buying a record and opening it up and having that big artwork and and looking at it while you listen to the music and you know trying to make sense of everything all together as opposed to 
just hearing a song blindly, you know, or just seeing the image and not hearing it. I think there is something nice that happens when all those things come together. Missing Artwork is a collaboration of Chris Lantinen and myself, Michael Paul Escanuelas. We are part of the Modern Vinyl family of podcasts, which represents other great shows like Pilot Study and Vinyl Crawl. Check out modern-vinyl.com to see the latest vinyl news, features, and to find out more information about our podcast family. Thank you to Mark Redito for our theme music. And of course, thank you to David Brandon Geating for talking with us. You can see more of his work at dbg.nyc. We are still in our podcast infancy, so please go and subscribe to our show on iTunes or whatever podcast service you favor, and leave a review telling us how much you love us and the show. Then go share us with your friends. We're always on the hunt for new listeners. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Missing Artwork, or at Modern Vinyl. Thank you for listening. It's not my fault.